I'm so thankful to be here, learning from these proud, warm, cheerful people how to be a better human being. I'm honing my Spanish, too. Oh, man, Cuban Spanish is like music. Think of drums and guitars, and even castanets. But people talk so fast that I miss half of what they say, particularly the jokes. Joaquin sometimes looks sad when I don't laugh at his, but I don't get them. People also drop the final consonants, slur words together, and sound totally different from Mexicans and Salvadorians. I thought that como taute was a weird Cuban greeting until Joaquin said it just meant como esta usted, the polite form for how are you. Before sealing the envelope, Sarah added a note addressed to her parents for Rob to mail from Tijuana. In his last letter, he had mentioned that they were out of their minds about her absence and had reported her as a missing person to the police. Luckily, they didn't know she had traveled to Cuba, as she wasn't on speaking terms with them when she left San Diego. They kept trying to control her, forgetting she was an adult, now she was making her own decisions, building a brand new life. That would show them. Still, she wrote a few lines about being in a place where she felt like she belonged, and they shouldn't worry about her, even if she knew that they would. Sarah had made dinner early, rice and chicken and a tomato, avocado, and cucumber salad. Joaquin didn't care for vegetables, but she didn't understand how one could live on a tropical island and not eat veggies and fruits. She had walked all the way to a farmer's market where prices were higher than in the Puesto, the neighborhood store where they sold potatoes and sometimes withered lettuce heads, but was also much better supplied. She had bought tomatoes, cucumbers, malangas, green peppers, a huge avocado, and a whole chicken. There was also pork, which she didn't particularly like. She had spent 300 pesos, all the money Joaquin had left in his armoire. 